Hello and welcome to week one, unit three. In the last unit, I talked about the SAP Cloud Platform Mobile Services. In this unit, I will provide an introduction to client app development options. Let's get started. With mobile services, we do support a variety of app development options. So on the left-hand side, you see the SAP Cloud Platform SDKs, which provide native app development um, for, for your mobile solutions. Um, then we have the mobile development kit. And on the right-hand side, you see the SAP mobile cards. In this unit, I will go through the details of all of these options. So let's start with the SDK for iOS. The SDK basically consists of four components. One is the SDK itself, which provides all the libraries that an application developer would put into his application in order to leverage the services from SAP Cloud Platform Mobile Services. But the SDK also contains um, the assistant. The assistant is the second component, and the assistant helps you to quickly get started with the iOS SDK and generate, it generates projects for you that you can use to jumpstart your application development. Then there is the third component, which is the SAP Fiori Mentor. The Fiori Mentor is an, SAP, is an application that runs on the iPad. It's a companion application that you would put beside your Mac in order to help you browse the UI controls that the SDK provides, adjust the properties and the visuals of the, of the UI controls, and then copy the code into your project that is needed to make this exactly available. So, and the fourth component is the iOS design language, which is also part of the SDK. So here we provide UI controls to you that you can use in order to build a mobile application and provide the screens. The SDK for iOS consists of various layers. I don't want to go into the details, but what you see here on the bottom is basically that the framework components that you see in the SDK corresponds one-to-one -one with the features on the server. So we have a feature on the server, for instance, that is remote logging. And here in the SDK, you find libraries that helps you to leverage this remote logging in a um, convenient way. Also, you find the, the list of UI controls here and other um, components like the offline sync framework that we will talk about later. But this is the general setup of the SDK and how uh, it looks like. The assistant of the SAP Cloud Platform SDK for iOS is a standalone application for your Mac that helps you to connect to mobile services, generate application configuration on the server, and generates locally a project, an Xcode project for you. With the help of the assistant, you can manage your projects and your dependencies quite easily, and it's all that you need to get started with the iOS SDK. Oh, sorry, that was one too fast. The SAP Fiori Mentor, as you see here, is running on your iPad. It's designed to fit on the iPad screen, and the idea is that you can browse through the variety of UI controls, select the one that you want to use in your application, and adjust the properties. And then, as you can see here on the screenshot, you can just download and copy the code into your project. And that makes it much, much easier to actually use the UI controls. The UI controls of the SAP Cloud Platform SDK for iOS are not just simple labels in a Fiori style. They are componentized objects which helps you to have complex screen and um, layouts. And these layouts are already predefined. So you don't need to worry about the pixel perfect adjustment of a label on the left hand side and the picture on the right hand side. It's all pre-designed for you. And you just need to pull it into your application and run it. This helps you 
to get a consistent view across all of your applications that you build with the SDK. And obviously you can also add your own uh, UI controls and use standard UI controls in parallel. We also have an SAP Cloud Platform SDK for Android. This Android SDK consists of the SDK. It provides also a wizard, which helps you to generate applications and UI controls that, uh, a, comp a list of UI controls that you can use for your screens. Again, here you find components, which directly refers to the APIs on the server and helps you to leverage the features like authentication or logging um, that are provided by the server. And this is done using standard libraries for your Android project. The wizard here is not a standalone application, but it integrates into the Android Studio, the de facto standard for app development for Android. So here, you would also connect to your cloud platform accounts, in particular to mobile services, generate applications, uh, adjust settings and, uh, of your application, and consume the, the services from your server. Also here, we have Fiori controls that you can pull into your application to have a consistent look and feel across your applications. Again, here, it's not the case that we just have simple labels that are Fiori styled. It's more than just, just that. Another option to build mobile applications is our so-called mobile development kit. The mobile development kit helps you to create cross-platform applications that you write, define once, and then you can use it on native or in, in a native way on Android and iOS at the same time. So you just need to build them once and you can consume, in on, consume them on iOS and Android. The mobile development kit con basically consists of three parts. One is the design time, one is the runtime, which in this case is the mobile services itself. And then you have a runtime uh, player on the device, which executes what you have built and executes your application in order to well, run it and bring it to your users. The last option we will discuss in this course is the so-called SAP mobile cards. Mobile cards is our take on micro applications as well as an easy way to get started with mobility. Here, the development of your mobile application is very reduced. So you don't need to be a full-fledged app developer to create a mobile card. Simple skill set um, like HTML, a little bit of JavaScript maybe, and style sheets will get you started to bring enterprise data to your users. Mobile cards comes also as a cross-platform development option. So you build a card once and it runs on the mobile cards on Android and iOS as well. The behavior of the mobile card is very similar to uh, what you may know from the wallet or passbook-like application. But in this time, um, it's not the boarding pass that is in your application, it's business information represented as a card. And it comes with a lot of predefined content. So for instance, you can easily use uh, Fiori applications and extract content from Fiori applications as a card. It also integrates very easily into other existing SAP business applications like Ariba, SuccessFactors, Concur and more. It allows you to run workflow approvals. So for each leave request, you would get a card and then you can uh, reject or accept that leave request directly from within the application. And the most Interesting feature here is that you can build custom cards and that is also what we will do in the course later on. And for the Chinese market, we also provide WeChat support for mobile cards. Very interesting, but maybe not for everybody. It's a little bit hard to understand mobile cards at the beginning, but once you figure it out, it's quite easy. So mobile cards 
is or a simple mobile card basically consists of two things. An HTML template which, which is filled with particular data from a backend system. We merge that using mobile services and then you consume it on the device. A card consists of a front site, but you can only also flip the card and see more detailed information about that particular item in the, on the back of the card. You can style the card to your needs, uh, adjust the colors, the, the um, graphics, everything you need is full under your control. And you can also add static assets. Also, charting is available, so if your backend provides some data that needs to be rendered in the card, no problem with that. And at the end, of course, you can also add actions to the card, simple actions like approve, reject, and your custom actions as well. So also here, the mobile cards consist of three components. The design time, where you build your card, the runtime, in this case, it's mobile services, again. And mobile services is uh, responsible for managing the life cycle of the card and distributing the card to the end user, on, which is running mobile card on the device. So these are the development options. And uh, what I want to show you now is one of the wizards. Uh, in this case, it's the assistant. And I want to build a mobile application from scratch with you in the next couple of minutes. I've installed the SDK Assistant already, and you see the first screen here. In order to make it connect to the Mobile Services Cloud Foundry trial account, you need to copy some configuration files to the Assistant. To make that easy, in the Mobile Services cockpit, uh, under important links, we have provided you the links that you need to copy into your assistant. To make it even more easier, you just need to click on this import URL link, which will open up the iOS assistant and copy all the data into your account in the iOS assistant. I've done that already. So go back here. And what we do now is we will create a new Xcode project from scratch. So I click on new. And the wizard, the assistant, uh, provides me three options here. First, I create a sample application that gives you all presets available. It connects to a sample database system uh, or data service so that you don't need to care about the backend system. It's a full running application end to end, very easy to set up. It's uh, designed for learning purposes. The second one is reuse existing application. Here, in reusing existing applications, you already have configured a mobile services application and you just want to create a new client project on top of it. And create a new is creating an application on the service from scratch. For this demo, we will do the sample application. I again need to tell the assistant where to connect to and provide a name for my project, my sample. In the next screen, we give it a name again for the product and click Finish. While this generating, um, what is happening here is that the assistant connects to your account, creates a new application configuration, and then will take the information provided there, connect to the backend, generate some magic, into your mobile application so that at the end you have a full running application on your simulator in this case. So let's do a fast forward. Here we go. The, your project will open up in Xcode and uh, it's ready to go. So you just can press on the execute button and it will compile and it already contains all the, uh, all the libraries and everything that you need. What you will see here is that in the emulator, the application will be installed, it will run, and will be executed. 
The app contains already the onboarding code. So there's an authentication screen that connects to Cloud Platform Mobile Services, and we can just start from here. Obviously, in an application, a user needs to register first. and logs in. This is the first step of the onboarding process. The next one will be optional data privacy pages that the user needs to confirm, and a passcode, which is also optional, but here it's the default. Now the user is onboarded and already received the first data from the backend system. A pop-up shows that um, this application is already push enabled, so I can allow incoming push notifications. And what you see here is data coming from the backend system. So here is a list of suppliers. Doesn't look so good, but the product actually looks quite well. So here is a list of product in your application, and I can navigate through the application. I can edit and so forth. All this was done by the assistant. And basically, that concludes the demo. In this unit, we have seen the development options of mobile services. We have discussed the iOS SDK, the Android SDK, as well as the mobile development kit for cross-platform native app development. And we have seen what SAP Mobile Cards is all about. This concludes Unit 3, Introduction to Client App Development Options. In the next unit, we will get into the anatomy and architecture of mobile services apps. Thanks for listening and see you in the next unit.